Hey, how's it going everyone? Today we're going to be working on this Nintendo GameCube controller lot that I purchased. Now, a lot of these remotes, I already went ahead and cleaned them out. Um, so a lot of this plastic, as you can tell, has been polished. A lot of them might have some scuffs still that are just kind of hard to get off. But nonetheless, I figured that this would make a good video to showcase a couple of problems that I normally encounter with GameCube remotes. And in case anyone out there has problems with uh, I don't know, maybe a joystick, a cord, or anything like that, then I wanted to go ahead and show some of the different types of uh, troubleshooting steps that can be taken in order to resolve and uh, get your GameCube controller working again. I went ahead and started cleaning a lot of these, uh, these uh, I guess, housings and a lot of the buttons. And normally that does take a lot of time and it's really boring. So I wanted to go ahead and just get that all prepped for everyone. And I want to take you all to the fun stuff, which is just getting those repairs done. So. Let's go ahead and pull some up and let's get started. All right, so here we have the three different GameCube controller models. So here we have going from left to right, the T1 model, the T2 model, and the T3 model. Now the most noticeable difference is the T3 model. This one is all plastic compared to the T2 and T1 model. These tend to be metallic on the housing and T1 and T2 are interchangeable. In case one breaks on either model, you can change a T1 onto a T2 and vice versa but the T3 cannot go into either of the existing two models. Um, now, the T1 tends to break a lot easier than the T2. This one tends to be a little bit better and has a um, just a little bit more of an upgraded, um, I guess, joystick compared to the previous one. But the T3 is definitely the most solid one out of the three, and uh, it's the one that people tend to like a little bit more. So the most common error that happens on these GameCube controllers is really mainly the joysticks. Now, uh, especially with these older models, they tend to get a lot more worn out as opposed to those T3 models. They tend to be a lot more resilient, but as you can see here, this one's just kind of drifting off to the right and it's a little bit loose. And one of the nice things about any of these joysticks is that these C stick joysticks can go here on the left joystick and vice versa. So. Um, that's normally what I end up doing. I, I end up salvaging from boards um, some joysticks. I really don't like using any of the aftermarket ones. And here I have one and I brought it because I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Since the way I sell these, I don't try to do these aftermarket now. This one is really, really uh, tight. Yeah, I really don't like it. It makes it really hard for the joystick to move. So normally when I see things like this, I just get rid of them. And um, in the case that I have any spare parts that are required, for example, maybe like rumble or maybe these uh, left and right bumper or the wire itself, then I'll go ahead and salvage those pieces too. Normally, uh, you'll be pretty surprised with how many boards I end up with. With all that said, let's go ahead and remove this joystick and let me show you how to do that first. So normally this is blocked by this black plastic housing. And in order to remove that, there's these two clips that are located right here and right here. Simply, you just gotta push this down and then just push outward and this should release this black plastic and at that point you should be able to have access to the uh, the joints here for that joystick and you can see here that there's some old solder uh, uh sorry flux that's that's just kind of left over so, so let me go ahead and get my desolder gun prep and we're gonna go ahead and start removing this All right, now that we got this one removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this spare one that I have here on this board. And we're gonna go ahead and put it um, and replace this one right here. So this is the one that's kind of off to the side. So let's go ahead and remove this one next. All right, so here I just knocked off just the dust that was surrounding this uh, joystick, but 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything that's inside with some 99% IPA once it's attached to the board. But first we gotta go ahead and remove the other faulty joystick from the other board. So let's go ahead and get that prepped as well so we can attach this one. All right, so we were able to replace this joystick. It looks and feels great, so they both look good. Now, another way to get rid of these joints in the back is simply by using a solder wick, and this is really just this. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos, and this just pulls away any of the solder from the joints. I know most people don't have a desolder gun, but this is just an another way of doing so, it's just that I'm pretty lazy doing it this way. It just takes a lot longer for me, and I find it a little inefficient, but sometimes you just, got to do with what you have so this definitely works all right so we're just going to go ahead and reassemble this i'm just going to do that off camera and then we'll go ahead and test it out afterwards we're going to move on to the next item so here we have the second most common issue that i face when fixing these gamecube controllers and that's this cord issue right here where it gets pretty chewed up or torn up and that's normally located right here at the base of this controller where the cord comes out and Normally, there are two different ways of doing it. When I try to just have controllers that I'm going to fix and keep for myself for testing, I normally just put heat shrink um, tubing on here just to kind of seal it up. I don't like selling it like that to other people. Normally, what I like to do is just replace it with a working cord that's um, attached all together, or I try to look for a replacement uh, cord. So in order to replace this, it's really just held down by these joints that are located right here. Let me go ahead and zoom in. So these right here, these six, I believe, yeah, these six here are the ones that are gonna get removed. And then we're gonna go look for another one that is uh, a working cord and we're gonna replace it with that one. So let's go ahead and get the desolder gun started again and we're gonna go ahead and put this one in. that this is the one that's a good cord and we're gonna go ahead and put that on the other component here the one with the t3 sticks which is this one so let's go ahead and put that in now so in case you guys are wondering how to actually set it up since the wires are color-coded the blue wire ends up going on the far right pin over here so it should look something like this like this and that's it you can see the blue wires like that all right, let's go ahead and solder this onto place and let's wrap up and test.
Now that these two controllers are completed, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these off camera and then we'll go ahead and assemble them. So I went ahead and finished the T3 controller. I don't have any of the original joysticks, so that's why you're seeing these that are the clear ones. And these tend to work pretty well uh, in regards to aftermarket. And we'll just denote this T3 one with these scuffings right here that I couldn't get off. So we'll go ahead and put this one aside and let's move on to the one that's the T1, T2 sticks. Now that everything's assembled, we're gonna go ahead and test them out and see if everything's working. So first we're gonna test the one with the T3 sticks. And so here's B, A, jump, jump, up, down, left, right, start, smash. This is a C stick and the shields. Okay, and the grab, there we go. Everything seems to be working. Now let's test out the one for the T2 stick. So there's A, there's B, down, left, right, up, the smash. Okay. Z, left, right, jump, and jump. Okay, and I think we're good. So that wraps up today's video. Now, I know this one was a little bit slower, but I did wanna showcase the two main issues that I encountered with the GameCube controller. And since I already had all these boards ready to go, I figured why not make a video about it? So hopefully this was helpful to someone out there that is facing similar issues. And if not, if you have other issues with your Nintendo GameCube controller, just please be sure to leave a comment and maybe I can help out on how to troubleshoot those since I've fixed quite a bit of them. If you liked today's video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe as it helps support this channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all next time.